Hello YouTube and welcome back. This is part 12 of the Ball Factory. We're going to wrap up this whole project today. So today we're going to be building our ball return conveyor. If you're going to have this working as a standalone single uh, display, then this will keep the entire project running in a closed loop. We have a ball hopper on this side to make that happen. We have a ball hopper on this side for adding into a GBC circuit. Uh, you'll notice I'm missing one ramp piece right here. Uh, I never got one, so I'm, I'm still looking to pick one up, going to order it. For now, because I've been running it as a closed loop, no problem. We're going to build this. Um, both of these are nearly identical. Uh, a couple small differences with the wall on one side and just a little bit of a space for an axle on this side to go through, so nothing major. And this ramp or return conveyor is going to build right into the system on the drive line, so we're looking good. Let's get the build going, and I hope you enjoy. So we're going to be mounting these onto the chains. For those of you who don't know, the three plates actually fit right into the chain links, and it's just a matter of pressing it into place. Now these sections of chain are 11 links each, and we're going to put the uh, this piece here right in the middle, so that when we put the whole thing together, every 11 teeth of the chain, or every 11 links of the chain, will have one of these that will help pull the ball up the conveyor system. So we've built the conveyor system. We've got the leg that supports it, one gear, and we have an extra gear here. So where this is gonna go, the leg that supports the conveyor system will actually position, well, first of all, let's get it in the right spot here. This axle comes out right in the next hole, and the leg that supports it is one stud away from the two by six that is, uh, connecting the two plates together. That just sits in place. And holding the other end of the axle over by the load turner, we're just gonna push this into place, just like that. But when it runs, it runs. And the balls come up and drop out. So that's super simple, straightforward. Uh, let's get the hoppers in place and get our machine running once and for all in a big celebration of completion.
All right, I'm laying this out so we can build this one. So this is gonna be the hopper for the uh, backside of the machine where the return conveyor comes in. Uh, you'll notice I do have one special one. This one's gonna be part of the front side because the axle that drives the elevator just fits into that cutaway. So we're not gonna worry about that right now. Although the way these build is gonna be just about exactly the same except when we get to the end and where this cutaway piece goes. So let's take a look at this one first. We're gonna build it uh, in place on our spare board. You can look at our um, gaps for the, the studs gap. So we got six studs. Back here it is seven studs. You're not seeing it crooked. And from front to back here is five studs. And from here across, um, well, let me count it for you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven studs. So with that, let's start putting some pieces on it. So we've built one of these. Essentially, you have to build two of them. Up to this point, they're identical, except for on this pillar, we have our cutaway on the one that sits on the front of the ball factory. And the way it sits is with that cutaway right like that on that one. And that's so that the axle can go through. So essentially build another one exactly like this but with this part in place of this one. And then I'll go through how to make each of them unique, one for the back side, one for the front side of the machine, um, to be able to handle the conveyor and also to be GBC standard to be able to accept balls from another device. So this is the one that goes at the back of the machine to work with the conveyor. You'll notice flat on this side, we've got a couple of slopes here just to make sure when the balls hit it they fall in, and a slightly higher wall just to make sure they don't bounce out of the device. So let's get this put into place. So we've just popped that off of the board and let's get it put into place. 
Now where that's gonna sit, it's super easy to set up. This front lines up with the front of the elevator uh, chute. So we can move this board out of the way and you'll see it comes right up to it and right to the back of the board. So on a 48 by 48 board, it fits right to the end. Press that all into place, just like that. Let's switch it on. Might notice I have a small timing issue back here. Um, probably gonna jam up. We're gonna go over how to fix those kind of issues in a follow-up video because some of you have been reaching out to me with those kind of problems. But at this point, you can see we have our conveyor system working, our hopper assembly working. We're just gonna throw the other hopper on the front side of the machine once we finish building that, and then we're gonna be done. Congratulations, you finished building the ball factory. Uh, this has got to be one of the most complicated setups I have ever built. This project has been incredible for the last couple of years. Um, I found my issue with the timing I was having over here. What happened was when I moved the, uh, the entire project here onto the setup table, uh, there was a bit of a flex in the board and the actual dumper wasn't securely fastened to the bottom. Pressing that down took care of it. So if you want to move this whole structure, you're going to want to put it on a maybe a small piece of plywood or some firm backing board of some sort, or don't move it. Uh, if you're moving it to a show, then yes, absolutely put it on a piece of plywood. Um, it doesn't flex very well. Everything is dependent on everything else. So let's have a look. We've got everything running. We've got the dumper working. We've got the conveyor system working. Um, all the timing is flawless. The elevator is running at 100% efficiency, uh, not missing any balls. Um, I want to hear from you guys. I want to see what you've done. Uh, the, the colors I've used are merely suggestions. In fact, some spots you may notice I don't even have all the right colors. So it's entirely left up to your own interpretation. Um, send me your pictures, send me your questions. Based on your questions, I'm going to be uh, doing an FAQ and we'll see what we can come up with for anything to help answer any of the questions you may have. There are a ton of little things that can go wrong with this. Uh, once it's working, it works beautifully. So don't get frustrated. It can be done. I at one point thought that perhaps it couldn't, but it can. You can make it run 100% um, and it is a fantastic piece to work with. So I hope you've had as much fun building it as I have, and uh, absolutely let me know how it goes. And thank you so much for watching. I am the Rebricker. Uh, if you follow me on Google+, Plus, you'll notice I have a, uh, a poll going to find out what the next project you'd like to see is. I do have a few in the works, so uh, rest assured there will be more coming. I do want to keep doing this as it seems to generate a lot of interest in LEGO outside of just following the standard instructions. So once again, thanks for coming by. Subscribe below if you'd like to be brought up to speed on any of the future projects that are coming up. Follow on Google+, and thanks again for watching. See you soon.